Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to make sure that uh, this thing is working this morning as we get started. Good to have everyone that made it out this morning on this beautiful December morning. Looks like we're going to be going good there. Um, how many of you like snow? Well, if you, if you do, you might need to move somewhere else, but I, uh, we don't get it too often here. Uh, I think when we've got it, we've got it in February or something. So we'll see what happens. How many of you think we're going to get snow this this uh, maybe winter? Or so we're hoping maybe something. Uh, it's pretty. Uh, people that live in it all the time they don't know. Um, uh, when I grew up, I grew up in a little town, and I've lived in some really small towns. And so I, I like San Antonio. I've been living in San Antonio for uh, for a good while, and I, and I like it. It's got its uh, good and bad things about it. A lot of convenient things. Sometimes in the small towns, you don't have a lot of options. And uh, one of the towns I used to live in was a population of about 1,200. So now that I'm living in San Antonio, it's quite a bit different, you know, driving and, and all kind of things. And so um, one of the, uh, you know, sometimes even in your places of worship, you've got, you know, there's not a lot of options. And so one of the little towns that I lived at, uh, Basically, it was either kind of like Catholic or Baptist. That was your options, and that was it. Uh, you know, uh, so so a place like San Antonio, where you've got so many stores, so many places of worship. Um, one of the little towns that I lived in, um, we had grown up in a Baptist church, and, and every Baptist church is a little different. Um, I've preached in Baptist churches as before, and, and uh, I've got relatives that still go to Baptist churches as, even to this day. Um, but uh, this little Baptist church that I grew up in it was fairly, I don't, know if, I don't want to say it's dead because I did get saved there and I gave my life to the Lord and, and I felt the presence of the Lord uh, during one of the services and, and I felt the call of God to go forward and to give my life. So, so it's not like dead, dead, but when I say it's dead, there just wasn't a lot of uh, yielding to the Holy Spirit. Uh, they did the best that they could with what they knew. And so, uh, kind of like if anybody ever sang a special, and at times my mom uh, would sing special sometimes. She was a singer. And, uh, you know, anytime anybody sang a special, it's not like afterwards, even if they did an incredible job, uh, everybody clapped and praised the Lord. Usually you would have one deacon in the back say in a very somber voice, Amen. And that was about it at that church. You know, somebody just had an incredible song, and you just hear one a deacon in the back, amen. And that was about it. You know, there was no clapping or no hand lifting. Uh, there was no tongue talking or anything like that in this particular group, group that I grew up in. But the Lord had mercy, and, and even in the midst of what may seem like just a really kind of a small, dead religious group, I, I found the Lord there. I found Jesus. And of course, I was raised in a home where of believers, where we prayed and, and where they acknowledged God. So um, later in life, in the summer of 1983, uh, my dad had been um, filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and he wanted me to experience the same. Um, he had prayed for me that summer. And uh, that particular summer, I was just a young man that liked going camping and swimming and fishing. And, and it was my summer break from school. And, I, and I'd had no real desire to go to church or anything like that. But uh, that particular summer, it wasn't a program uh, that got hold of me. It, it wasn't a, a church, per se, that got hold of me. It wasn't really my dad, uh, an organization, um, but it was, it was the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost that got a hold of me that summer as I just decided, well, why not? Go ahead and pray for me. I, that sounds kind of cool, you know. Uh, so they prayed for me. Initially, nothing happened. Uh, that next morning as I woke up in bed, I, I woke up speaking a different language that I'd never heard before. And because they told me what kind of a little bit about what it was they were praying for me for. So as I woke up that morning, as I, I, I woke up uh, uh, speaking in tongues in my bed, and I got up and I thought, wow, this is different. And I really felt God in a very strong way. And I, I, after that, I started going to church that summer, reading my Bible. And, and just God really just kind of revolutionized it. He, he revived my life and brought it back to him by the power of the Spirit. Listen to what God says. Let's look at a few scriptures here this morning speaking of. And I hope you spend time in the Word of God because there's a lot of different things we can spend time in. 
And one of the most important things we can spend time in is the Word of God. And that's why you're here this morning, probably. We're just spending a little extra time with the Word of God. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it, the Word of tells us this. God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. Now, that's the kind of spirit that I want. God didn't just give us some generic spirit. You know, sometimes people, if they're going to go buy something, they want to buy something good. You know, sometimes when people package things, they don't package it very good. Sometimes you may be buying the same things, but because of how they packaged it or the name brand, you think, I want that because that's good quality. And God didn't give us some inferior quality spirit. He gave us his very own spirit. He didn't say, now, the Holy Spirit, that's just for me. That's just for my son, Jesus. He gave us the very best. He didn't give us like this junior Holy Spirit. He didn't give us this, this sub-level Holy Spirit. He gave us the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God. So it's just something to think about because sometimes we can take things for granted. And again, I was baptized with the Holy Spirit back in the summer of 1983. So I experienced kind of a spirit-led, spirit-powered life for a while. And if I'm not careful, and if, and if you're anywhere like me, uh, you know, that initial outpouring, that, that some of the initial beginnings and the excitement and the feelings and the power of God over time and over weeks and over months and over years, Sometimes it, it just doesn't feel the same. Like in that beginning, when I first was filled with the Spirit, I felt the presence of God on my heart for like a week straight. And that was as a teenager. I felt that, I just felt, I mean, uh, the Holy Spirit, I felt Him so strong on me for like a, a whole week straight. And I thought, wow, something has definitely happened. Uh, I can't explain it, but I know that the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, has done something in me. And so uh, th we have to think, this is a great scripture to memorize. This Spirit that God gave us is a spirit of power. And this morning I'm talking about Holy Ghost power power because we need that in our lives. Listen to what Jesus said here in Luke 24, verse number 49 to us. Behold, I, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry, wait for it, in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued, clothed, fully equipped with power from on high. I don't know if you've ever worked on jobs before where you have to wear personal protective equipment, as they call it, PPE. Uh, maybe some of you do, and some places are a little more serious about that than others, uh, where you may have to wear earplugs. Uh, of course, some of us in our society having to wear face masks, that's a type of PPE, so to speak. Some places have to wear safety glasses, and, and I always have to, I always, I don't know what it is about me, but I always hate having to do that. I know it's for the good, you know, of some of those places, and I know some of those places, they go a little overboard, but they want to protect their people because if somebody gets hurt with insurance and, and insurance claims, it costs companies a lot of money. So some, some companies, you have to wear gloves, and, and I used to work at a place where we had to wear gloves all day because we worked with sharp metal, and so you'd cut your hands if you didn't. So yeah, it was a good idea to, to wear some of that. But I, I go back to the scripture and what we're talking about this morning where he talked about you're going to be clothed you're going to be equipped with this power from on high I want you to know that our life as a believer sometimes can be very dangerous we face enemies that are unseen devils principalities wicked spirits that come to attack and this isn't just make-believe this isn't just a dress rehearsal this is the real deal I, I, I'm going to send this Holy Ghost power upon you till you be clothed, fully equipped with this power from on high. This isn't a man's power. This isn't a manual worship center power. This isn't any minister's power. This is power from heaven that equips us, that protects us. 
more than just going out of your house. And the other day I was going to go into a store and I forgot I didn't have a mask with me. And I thought, oh man, I'm not going to be able to go into the store right now. I forgot to bring a mask. And, and you know, one good thing about the Holy Spirit, it's not like, oh, I forgot to bring the Holy Spirit with me. It doesn't work that way. He's always here with us. Now we do need to yield to the Spirit of God, acknowledge Him and, and surrender and submit to Him. But, uh, but thank God He's always here. And He protects us a lot better than some little mask would ever would. I'm not saying a mask is bad altogether, but I am saying that the Holy Spirit, he can protect us from every unseen enemy that may be there, and I don't want to quench him. I want to yield and surrender and submit to him as much as possible because he's one of our biggest helpers that we have. Matter of fact, he's called the helper. And uh, Messiah said it's actually really beneficial when he comes because he's going to help you uh, beyond what you, you realize. And, and Messiah helped people when he was here. He went about doing good, helping all kind of people. But he says, it's even better when I leave because the Holy Spirit, he's going to help on a level that, that beyond kind of what I'm doing here. Listen to what uh, also is being said here to us. And this is Jesus again in Acts 1.8. You will receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And we could say, as a result of that, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth, the very bounds of the earth. So he's telling his believers, his disciples, you're going to receive power. Notice the progression here. You shall receive power you shall be witnesses. And uh, he's not talking about Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, maybe you've had some of those come to your door before. Uh, usually they're, uh, you know, just it's a variety. Maybe you've had the LD, the Latter-day Saint Witnesses coming. Usually a couple of young men with white shirts and they have their little name tag that says Elder Joe Doe and Elder Jim Bob or whatever it is. They're only like 16, 17. And they're, they're like elders. I'm thinking, my gosh, uh, what, what is somebody in their 40s or 50s, an ancient elder. Uh, I mean, because I addressed them one time, I'm like, you're an elder? How old are you? And I'm just like, that just don't sound right. I mean, do you know what elder means? Uh, anyway, uh, uh, they didn't they didn't receive it well. They didn't understand it. And so, uh, you shall be witnesses. You shall receive power. You shall be witnesses. If we understand the Holy Ghost power and the purpose of the Holy Ghost in our lives and in our communities, it's to help us to be a witness. It's not just some sideshow. Well, you know, we, we just want to trust the leading of the Spirit when there's nothing else we can do. That'd be the wrong attitude. Well, you know, we're just going to do everything in our power and in our wisdom and in our planning. And if all else fails then maybe we'll try to listen, if we can, to the Holy Spirit. You know, and there's a lot of groups that may do that, or may, they may er, never even get to that point. I remember one person a uh, long, long time ago, he, he was looking at the church bulletin, and in their particular church bulletin, they had the whole service listed out. Every song, every prayer, the sermon, everything. And, and he was like, as he looked at it, he said, well, where, when, does the whole, when do y'all allow uh, a kind of surrender to the Holy Spirit? I mean, you've got everything planned out, and, and I, uh, according to your intellect and your planning, I mean, uh, I, and, and that was his thought process, and he was just, I guess, in between the lines is when maybe you, you're trying to... Listen to the definition of a witness. This word witness, uh, from the Greek, it means martus, uh, uh, which comes from the word martyr. The word martyr means a person who voluntarily suffers death as the penalty of witnessing and refusing to renounce their faith. A person who sacrifices something of great value and especially life itself for the sake of principle. That's what he said. You're going to be witnesses. You're going to be ones that, that aren't afraid to die. You're going to be ones that are able to stand in the face of death and you won't care. You're going to hold on to your witness by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost power to witness in word and in wonder and in worship and in wisdom and in work and in warfare. I want you to know that, that uh, there, we have certain abilities. Some of us have talents. And that's great. Some of us have more talents than others. And, and, and you know, everybody has their physical limitations and their abilities. Um, and sometimes that can be a great blessing. 
And sometimes people use that for the body of Christ and use that in, in, in the work world. But one of the dangers sometimes is that the more equipped we are or the more that we feel like we can do in our own power, the less we yield to and the less we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and there's a big difference between our power and what we're doing and what God wants to do and what he can do. Sometimes we just want to hold on to what we've got and not give it over to him. Holy Ghost power to witness. Not our, I've gone to witnessing school before. I've gone to several Bible colleges where they taught you how to witness. They taught you the, the whatever it was, the ABCs, and, and you had your programs. And, and I've even designed programs before similar to that. This is how we're going to do it. Uh, we, we used to go out weekly witnessing every day knocking on doors and we had it already memorized things we were going to say the answers we were going to give and so we and it wasn't bad it's not morally evil but yet we didn't really think about why don't we ask the spirit of god why don't we just let the holy spirit lead us you know we had our set answers you ever go to a restaurant and this is kind of what it's similar to you go through a drive through and they're programmed what they're going to ask you and what they're going to say. And sometimes if you mess up their program, it throws them off. Okay, that they have their routine as they're trained. And, and if you throw a, a, a monkey wrench in it, it's like you can tell it confuses them. Wait a second, you know, it's like they don't even know how to talk to you. They just know their little program and their little routine. And, and sometimes it's best just to follow it because you'll confuse them when you get your order wrong. They're like, I didn't want this. That happened last night. I went home. I'm like, I didn't order this. I, uh, but I ate it anyway. But anyway. Uh, but, you know, sometimes I'm like, you know, what's wrong with you? And sometimes that happens in the body of Christ. We're so programmed. And, and we kind of get this, this direction. And I believe sometimes the Holy Spirit's saying, there's a better way. There's, there's a better way to talk to that person. Oh, no, just stay out of this. I've already got this. I've got, I'll take care of this. And maybe the Holy Spirit in that still small voice whispering and saying, that's not going to work. Oh, and then we may be thinking, oh, I rebuke you, devil. And it's not the devil. It's the Spirit of God trying to help us. Sometimes even in wonder, a supernatural miracle that may take place in worship. We'll talk some more about some of this. Um, this morning I'm talking about Holy Ghost power. We're going to talk about Holy Ghost prophecy, Holy Ghost preaching, Holy Ghost praying, and Holy Ghost persevering. And kind of how all of this works together, and I hope you can kind of see, and again, this morning we're also talking about man power, or we could say woman power, or is it Holy Ghost power? A lot of people, sometimes even in ministry, they get drained, they get burnt out, uh, maybe not even in ministry, maybe just in their spiritual walk, and they fall back because they're walking in their power and not in the Holy Ghost power. And they're relying on their strength and their wisdom and their uh, abilities rather than trusting in the Lord and the work of the Lord that is in them. Even some ministries that are built on men and, and, and charisma and, and, and different things uh, rather than on the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Spirit of God. Sometimes when we get more self-sufficient, uh, there's danger in that because we get less reliant upon the Spirit of God. And I've been in many, many ministries over the years, and, and you know, uh, good and, and all kind of uh, ministries, and they all went about things a little different way. And, and some again, uh, we're very reliant on the Holy Spirit. Others, maybe not so much. And some, you know, sometimes it's good to have that balance. God does give us wisdom, and he wants us to walk in his wisdom. But he wants us to walk by the Spirit of God. Let's look at a couple of scriptures here. And um, I've always liked the scripture. This is talking about, it may even be us in the future. I don't know what America holds. I don't know what persecution is coming down the road for us as believers, but it may not be so good. What's going to happen whenever your faith gets persecuted beyond what you ever imagined? What's going to happen whenever you get threatened with death because you're a believer and they say you need to renounce your belief or you're going to be denied whatever it may be? And, uh, you know, you need to believe in science, not in the Savior. And unless you renounce your belief in the Savior, we're not going to give you food. We're not going to give you money. It could come down to that. 
I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but it says that great persecution is going to happen. Messiah prophesied that people would hate us. And our job isn't to make people love us. Oh, well, maybe I better back down because I, I don't want to lose my friends. It's better to lose friends than to lose your salvation. It's better to lose friends than to lose connection with God and with the Spirit of God. Listen to what it says here. But when that happens, it doesn't say if, but when it happens, when they bring you in before synagogues and rulers and authorities, don't be anxious, don't be worried about it about how or what you're going to say or what, you're, what you should say. Thinking, oh my goodness, I could die right now. Uh, they could kill me right now. They hate me. It says, the Holy Ghost will teach you in that same hour what you ought to say. Just, just relying on the Spirit of God to give you the words, not thinking, oh, I've got to try to get all the answers ready because if I don't, I might die. No, it, just, it says, don't worry about it. And this is what I would say the best way to witness and testify is in, by, with, and through the power of the Holy Ghost. I've been in some places where that testimony maybe was dry. It was very dead, maybe very religious and rigid. And uh, God can use anything. He can use dead. Again, God used a very dead church to place me in and to, to introduce me to Jesus and salvation, and I'm thankful for it. I've known people that were in the midst of, of a real cult. And they ended up getting saved there in the midst of even some real crazy places. Uh, God can do anything. He can use any place uh, to, to, to speak and to have his way. It doesn't mean that was a good place. It doesn't mean that, that he liked the deadness. It doesn't mean they should maybe stay there the rest of their lives. But uh, uh, God can do amazing things as he wished. The best way to witness and testify, and again, I'm not saying don't learn scriptures. I'm not saying don't have a program. Sometimes it can be helpful, especially if we're not in the spirit that day. But more important than any of that is that we have a relationship with God that we're surrendered and submit him and, and fully relying upon the Holy Spirit and his power in our lives. Listen to this scripture here, 2 Peter 1, 20. Knowing this first, that every prophecy of scripture did not come into being of its own interpretation. Um, I've got many Bibles at home. That's probably my favorite book is the Bible. And uh, I like having different translations and studying them and reading them. Uh, the Bible is full, really, of prophecy. And, and when we look at how this book came about, it didn't come into being of its own interpretation. One of the things I've heard people say, well, I've read that before. Just like it's a normal, natural book, and it's not. Listen, as he goes on here, he says, for prophecy of the scriptures was not at any time born by the will of man, not at any time and in any way, but being born alone by the Holy Ghost, holy men of God, they spoke. So I want you to just grab hold of what's happening here and understand this, that the Holy Bible is a Holy Ghost inspired book. And, and uh, I want you to understand the Holy Bible is not just written by men, it was, but it was written by holy men that were moved upon by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Bible isn't just a book. That, and and uh, the other day that this had happened, and I, I have several Bible apps on my phone, and uh, one of them, a couple of them are like audio Bibles, and some of them are dramatized audio Bibles. And, and I don't know if you're like me. Maybe this is just me. But, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll play that thing, and I'll have it running, and it's not like a movie. You know, it wasn't designed like that. It's not like a book that sometimes is designed to capture your imagination and your mind. So sometimes if you're just listening with the carnal mind, it just doesn't connect. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm listening to a holy, Holy Ghost-inspired book, trying to listen to it with my carnal mind, and there's just not a connection there. But unless I open up my spirit to it, unless I connect to it by, the, uh, by my spirit. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes people try to connect the Word of God with their brains, and, and, and there's just danger sometimes in part of that process. The best way to interpret and understand the Holy Ghost book is in, by, with, and through the Holy Ghost. You know, I, I, I'm one that studies the Bible all the time. I've gone to multiple Bible colleges. Um, I thank God that I made it through them. Some of the Bible colleges, it doesn't make you better. 
It doesn't necessarily make you smarter. In my opinion, it doesn't necessarily make you more called or more qualified. Uh, maybe it's just to build endurance because some of the Bible colleges that I went to, some of them in a way seemed dead. It was full of men sharing their thoughts, men agonizing over the word of God with their intellect, trying to tell you how they thought, how they see it in their mind, with their mind, which our carnal mind is at odds against God. So again, we do the best that we can. And I'm not condemning any of that per se, but unless the Holy Spirit is involved, it can be just a dead religious experience. And so, uh, and, and, and our walk with God, and in and, and our reading time, in our prayer time, if the Holy Spirit's not involved, it can truly just be a dead religious experience. Maybe you've been there before. I have. I'll be honest with you. I've been there before. Uh, there was a time in my life uh, where I think it was after I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. We were living actually in that small town. I won't go into all the details, but I was going to this another little dead Baptist church. And uh, I had visited my dad that summer because he lived somewhere else different than I did. My parents had divorced. So uh, that summer when I had been baptized with the Holy Spirit, just the fire of God hit my heart. I came back to where I was living in that little dead small town. I went back to my little dead Baptist church and I kind of told them about my experience. And so they didn't like it. They didn't understand it. They didn't agree with it. And so they gave me all this religious material and said, okay, what you need to do is just calm down. And you just need to read this program and just kind of get back into this dead religious ritual. And I even told them at that time, I said, man, I just, uh, you know, I don't even want to listen to secular rock and roll and music. I just, I just want to pursue God. And, and, and I remember the pastor telling me, no, no, you go back to listening to your secular music. You need to just calm down. And, uh, you know, and, and I mean, this is kind of the, the uh, advice of this, this supposed pastor man of God who didn't understand. You know, he didn't know better. You know, he, he, he just kind of saw that something had happened and it, maybe it scared him. He's thinking, oh, this ain't right. This ain't Baptist. Uh, we don't need somebody coming into this place and, and rocking the boat and getting people, uh, you know, off track. I don't know what was being said behind the scenes, but they might have said, hey, you better calm this young man down. Uh, uh, this, this is all, it's, he's going to mess up everything. Uh, uh, we don't believe that here. You, you better, you, you know, do something. So they tried. They, they tried, you know, and, and, and to be honest with you, and I won't go into all that, it actually kind of set me on a road for backslidden for a season because where I was living at that time, again, the only options were Catholic or Baptist. As far as I knew at that time, I didn't know another in that area that I was living at. I didn't know another Holy Ghost field person or a congregation or anything. All I knew was this dead religious stuff and I just knew I had experienced something better and, and I was doing the best that I could. And anyway, I won't go into all that. I listened to this John 4, 24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The, the best kind of worship is in, by, with, and through the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, I've been involved with uh, worship for a long time, and I love to worship the Lord. I, I've been involved with a lot of different worship groups and styles. And uh, I, I've just found that, you know, sometimes, again, you have sometimes very talented people, uh, sometimes very gifted people, but sometimes very worldly secular people. And they're doing their best, and maybe they, we like the way it sounds with our ears. And you may be in a place where it sounds very professional, you know, very nice, you know, to our natural man uh, count, whatever it may be. But there's a place, and I've been to some of these places where the music didn't sound so good, but the Holy Ghost was there in the midst of it because you had people full of the Holy Ghost trying to, and, and, and again, you have to kind of see the balance of what I'm saying here. Sometimes the best worship isn't having the best music playing in the background. 
Sometimes the best worship may not even be in a place where there's any instruments, but it's really having your heart there and connecting with the Spirit of God. The best kind of worship, it's really when the Holy Ghost begins to get involved and you begin to surrender and submit and yield yourself to the Spirit of God fully. Uh, you know, I believe in trying to play skillfully. There is a verse that says, play skillfully with a loud noise. I like both of those things. But at the same time, if I'm just doing that and my heart's not in tune with the Lord and the Holy Spirit's not there, it'll still be lacking quite a bit there even in spite of that. Uh, also in connection with that, I'll say this, the best kind of praying is in, by, with, and through the power of the Holy Ghost. And so I, I, I like to pray. I like to pray different kind of prayers. I like to sometimes pray out loud. I like to sometimes pray quietly where nobody even knows that I'm doing it. Uh, you know, I, I laugh some people saying as they're walking around with their mask on that they could stick their tongues out at people and nobody would know it. Uh, you ever walk around where you see somebody talking and these days, you know, they probably have a phone in their ear and they're talking to somebody. Back in the day when I grew up, if they were just talking, you knew that they were probably either drunk or probably nuts because they, if they were talking to themselves. I used to have a teacher who was a nun who taught our science class in high school and she always taught us that if anybody's talking to themselves, they're talking to the devil. And so I've never heard that before, but for some reason that was her mentality. When you talk to yourself, you're talking to the devil. And so, I, I, you know, any, anyway, I, I mean, that was just one of her things she had said. She was, what can you say? She was a Catholic nun uh, teaching at a public school. Uh, the best kind of, uh, uh, and let me explain what I mean by this. Let's look at some scriptures, and hopefully you're familiar with some of this stuff. Jude one twenty. But you, beloved believers, born-again believers, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. He, he's commanding us and instructing us here to pray in the Holy Ghost. So I can walk around with my mask on and I can be praying underneath my mask and I can be smiling and worshiping and people may not know it. I can be moving my mouth and praying in tongues and nobody will see it so they may not think that I'm drunk like what happened in Acts chapter 2 thinking, well, that's, that guy must be drunk. He's walking around mumbling to himself. Uh, praying in the Holy Ghost or in tongues, it says, is your most holy faith. Think about that. It, and that's, that's the way it describes it there in, in, in Jude verse 1 verse 20. Praying in your most holy. What is faith? Well, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence or proof of what is unseen. In that summer of 83, I didn't see the Holy Spirit. I didn't see fire. I didn't see a wind. I, I didn't see a dove. But I saw, I experienced the evidence of his presence. I, I, I could say I felt it. I don't know how to describe that exactly. It's the evidence or proof of what was unseen. Typically, I didn't wake up in bed as a young teenage boy just waking up speaking in another language. That was unusual. But it was evidence that something had happened. Praying in the Holy Ghost is your most set-apart substance, evidence, and proof of the Holy Ghost, his presence, power, and provision. As I say that again, don't take that for granted. I've been praying in the Holy Ghost for many years, since 1983. And uh, I have to, every time I have to remember that as I'm praying in the Spirit of God, remind myself, that's the Holy, that's not just me. Because I do it so much that I can take it for granted. And I have to realize, because when I first started doing it, I'm like, wow, this is incredible. Wow, this is awesome. This is cool. You know, especially as a teenage boy. Now that I'm older, I'm like, eh, it's just, you know, what I do. You know, I, I've lost some of that, that excitement and, and, and what I know is happening here, that that's the Spirit of God. And it's not just the Spirit of God, but it's the Spirit of God praying the will of God, not just uh, maybe that's the will of God, but praying the definite and the perfect will of God. First Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. I don't know. I do pray, but sometimes I cease to pray because I don't know what else to pray for. But the Holy Spirit, it, it's an ever-present source and help of praying. One of the best and most powerful and most profound ways to pray is praying in the Holy Ghost. And so, uh, you know, and again, I, I'm not saying don't pray any other way, but I believe it's a powerful. Listen to what he says here in Romans 8. 
Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Some say that he gives us words that we normally don't speak. And I want you to see that. I mean, he's just putting it out there. I don't care who you are, how old you are, how spiritually mature you are, we do not know what to pray for as we ought. And again, I like to pray. I think prayer is important. But if I'm honest with myself, I'm going to pray sometimes selfish prayers. I'm going to pray what I think is best, but it may not be what's best. I may pray what I think would be a good prayer, but it may not be that good. I may even pray, well, that sounded good. I, that sounded like a powerful religious prayer. I'm proud of myself. Wow. And it might not have been very good. Remember the two men that prayed at one time whenever Jesus was there and they were kind of observing and the one guy's like, hey, God, it's me. I, I mean, I have got it together here. I mean, I fast, I pray, I, I, I read, I, whatever, you know, he does all this stuff. I mean, I, I have got it going on. And then the other guy comes and he's like hitting himself. God, be merciful to me. I'm just messed up. And then Jesus is like, well, who do you think had the better prayer? And they're like, well, uh, you know, they're like, huh? well, it, this guy sure seemed to have his act together. And of course, Jesus is like, it's this guy. God actually liked this guy's prayer better. Really? He liked that one better? Yeah. We do not know what to pray for as we ought, even if you think you do. And again, that doesn't mean you shouldn't pray. Well, I don't know how to pray. I guess I shouldn't pray. No, that's not what it's saying there, so don't misinterpret. Well, I don't know how to pray as I ought, so I just shouldn't pray at all. No, no. The idea is that's why we need God's help. We need the Holy Spirit's help. Uh, look at Romans 8, 27. He who searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. He's not just praying what he thinks best. He's not just praying just uh, kind of like we do as humans, the best that we can with an intellect that doesn't know better sometimes. But he's praying according to the will of God. When we're praying by the Spirit, we're praying mysteries. We're praying supernatural prayers. We're praying the will of God. We may not understand everything we're praying, but we can be assured we're praying the will of God. Not only that, but one of the best weapons of our spiritual warfare is in, by, with, and through the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't know if you know that you, we are in spiritual warfare even now. Uh, some believe that real war is coming, civil war. Some believe that war with China is coming. And some people want to prepare and they want to get scared and they want to fear about the times that are coming before us, even in our country. But I just remind you, God didn't give you that. If it's fear, God didn't give you a spirit of fear. And uh, there's always a spiritual battle going on, and that's more important than the physical battle. We're all going to die some way, some day, and we shouldn't fear that. To live is Christ, to die is gain. But to die without the Lord, that's the more dangerous part. Oh, you don't be afraid of coronavirus. Don't be afraid of whatever it is. Don't fear. Think about that. You shall receive power. You shall be witnesses. That's one of our greatest calling, one of our greatest uh, reasons of why we have the Holy Ghost power, to be a witness, to be a light. The Holy Spirit's like the oil that we're to light with. Uh, talking about the spiritual armor, uh, sometimes we leave this part out when he talks about the armor of God in Ephesians 6, but this is, this is part of the armor of God. Praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication to the end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all saints. Praying at all times in the Spirit. Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost praying, Holy Ghost persevering. When I read books about people that were martyred and they held on to their faith even to the, in the point of death, I think, how did they do that? How did they become so strong? What was the Holy Ghost power that helped them to get to that place? First Corinthians 14, 15, this was Paul, and he's saying, 
I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the mind also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the mind also. So he's saying here that he's going to pray both ways. He's going to worship both ways with his intellect the best that he can. But he's also going to pray by the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says this and for also later in that same chapter. Therefore, brothers, earnestly desire to prophesy. Well, how does one truly prophesy? Do they learn a lot of scripture? Do they, 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 they just study all their lives? No, none of that. How, well, how do they do that? They rely on the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, oh, okay. Desire to... Pro how do I... Uh, think about the eager... No, don't just desire it. Maybe as the holidays are coming, there's things that we're desiring. You know, sometimes they send magazines in the mail and it's full of all of these pictures of different things. It's like, oh, I want that, I want that. You remember as a kid, you see these toys. Oh, I want that latest and greatest toy. Oh, I want. Well, as adults, we're kind of the same, but just the toys kind of change. Oh, oh, I really like that. Oh, wow, that looks awesome. I really want that. Eagerly desire, not the latest and greatest, whatever's out there, Eagerly desire the Holy Ghost power. Eagerly desire to prophesy, to be a mouthpiece for God, to be a witness for God. What, what, what if every believer on the planet, that was their greatest desire, was to be a witness, even to the point of death? What if every believer on the planet began to rely on the Holy Ghost power more than ever before? Do not forbid speaking in tongues. Don't forbid it. You may not understand it. Some people don't agree with it, and they may never agree with it, but don't forbid it. It's of the Lord. Some people want to say, oh, I don't know. Is that really the Lord? It, it's really the Lord. Well, why would he do that? Remember in James, the tongue is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Nobody can tame it. People tame dogs. They tame cats. They tame uh, uh, killer whales. They tame all kind of things, but they can't tame the tongue. God can. The Holy Ghost can. The Holy Ghost can take it and put a language on it that that person never learned before. So I think about that. I'm thinking, okay, as I pray in tongues, uh, that's a language. I, I don't even know what language. Sometimes people in the process of praying, they'll even have several languages. Sometimes it might even be the, the language of an angel. Whatever exactly that means, and I, I don't know exactly. They're praying in a language that their mind doesn't even understand. Well, that's impossible. How can you be speaking in a language you don't even know? That, that's humanly impossible. Exactly. It's impossible. Uh, as I pray in tongues, I'm praying because the Holy Ghost gives me that ability Look at what Jesus said here in Mark 16, 17. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. And he says here, they will speak with new tongues. And he doesn't mean that they're all going to learn a new language. Well, in order to be, you know, I'm going to learn French, I'm going to learn German, I'm going to learn uh, whatever it may be. He's not talking about that. Okay, nothing wrong with learning languages or whatever if you desire to do that, but that's not what he's talking about here. They will speak. It doesn't say they'll learn it. It doesn't say they'll learn the new language, but they're just going to speak a new language that they never learned. Maybe they've never even heard before. That's impossible. Yes, it is. Physically speaking, humanly speaking, absolutely. Later he says to it's just a sign. He gave it as a sign. Uh, it's not to be figured out. It's not, well, how does that work? I, I don't know. It's, it's just supernatural sign that God gave. Holy Ghost power, again, for what? To witness in word, in wonder, and in worship, and in wisdom, and in work, and in warfare. This Holy Ghost power, we need to yield more to it and understand more the presence of the Spirit of God in our lives and, and, and be ever so uh, uh, knowing that, that He doesn't leave us. It's not like, well, is He here today? I don't feel Him. He's here. And He wants to help you. And, and I want you to think about this. There is a power like no other power. And it is in, by, with, and through the power 
of the Holy Ghost. I can learn things. I can study. I can try to improve myself. I, I can try to discipline myself more to live a better life. And I'm not saying that's bad. But even in all of that, I may be lacking if I'm lacking the Spirit of God's help. If I'm not surrendered and submitted and relying upon the help of the Holy Ghost, I can be shortchanging myself. Years ago, as a young man, we went to a, uh, I was just a little boy, we went to a river. We had some friends that owned a big property, and they had a river that ran through their property. We were out there close by the river, and I was just a little boy. I loved just wandering around and looking. And I remember I, I was wandering around, and I found a couple of little coins in the dirt. And I was so excited about it. And, uh, and I thought, look, Grandma. I, uh, I called at that time my grandma and grandpa. I called um, Mima and Papa. And so uh, my other grandma on the other side of the family, we called her Nanny. But I, I said, Mamma, look, I found a couple of coins. You did? That's wonderful. Where did you find that out? And I kind of said, oh, right over there, over, over there. Oh, okay. So I went on and continued wandering around. My grandmother went over to that area and started digging. And she actually found a whole lot more money. Uh, she kept it. She didn't give it to me, but she kept it. She, she, she focused and she began to dig, and I just kind of settled for whatever it was I found and went on about my way. But my grandmother, she was a little older, definitely wiser than I was, and, and uh, she thought, you know, if there was some coins there, there may be more there. And, uh, and sure enough, there was. And I just say this, that, that as we taste and see that the Lord is good, when we think about the Holy Ghost power don't just settle for a couple of coins like I did as a kid. Don't just settle, well, I guess that's it. You know, I, I, I kind of felt a little something. I guess that's it. Oh, well, praise the Lord. I guess that's all I deserved. You know, I guess that's all, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I guess God's running out. I guess, I mean, it doesn't run out. Well, you know, I read about old and things that happen, and, and I guess that's it. I guess that was just for them there, and, and, and I, I, I guess we just, we're on our own. I don't know. No. That's what some people believe. Well, you know, the Holy Ghost was initially given to get things kicked off, but then he kind of waned away and the gifts of the Spirit, that all kind of just dissolved into thin air. And now we're just on our own. Some people teach that in their congregation. And, and now we're just on our own. Uh, good luck. That's kind, of, that, that's kind of how they, I'm not saying they say those exact words, but that's more or less what they're saying. Good luck, you know, uh, endure to the end. We are supposed to endure to the end, but the Holy Spirit is still here and he has just as much power and he has just as much help available to us as he has ever had. And maybe we're not yielded, maybe because we've grown so much in our knowledge and in our technology and all that we do as humans that we've kind of put him aside. We may not be saying it, but maybe we are saying it. We don't really need the Holy Ghost power. We've got electricity. We've got smoke. Uh, so, some congregations, they've got special lighting. Some congregations, they've got smoke machines. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, we, we acknowledge the Holy Spirit. But in all honesty, we've got so much going on, you know, it, that in a way, they're just saying, well, we don't really need you. They're not saying it, but yet they are saying it. And I don't know where you're at in life. I don't, you know, be careful. Because there may come a day, and I'm not saying this for sure, but there may come a day where God may need to bring you to a place where he needs to strip some things away. Some of your securities. Have you ever had kids where they had pacifiers or there was something, a blankie or some little toy that they just didn't want to let go of? And they were beyond that age. We're like, yeah, it just doesn't look right. You know, you probably shouldn't be carrying that. One of ours was like that where we felt like they were kind of had the pacifier beyond what they should have had it. And I believe sometimes the body of Christ is walking around with pacifiers. And some of them need to grow up. And they're holding on to their securities. And they're not letting the Spirit of God move them. 
Don't be afraid of the Holy Ghost power. Don't be afraid of praying in the Spirit of God. Even if your mind is speaking against it, even if like I was, the whole congregation's telling you to get away from that. We don't believe in that here. Even if the congregation, like the pastor was telling me, hey man, go back to your secular lifestyle. You're getting a little too crazy with this. After that had happened and I did a couple of things, I won't go into all of that. I had told my mom who was not serving God, I said, oh mom, I, I, I don't want to become one of those Jesus freaks. And I remember her telling me, son, I, I think it's too late. I, I, it's too late for you. I think you've already there. And, and, and uh, so, uh, and I, I remember her telling me, and this was her mindset as a carnal woman, I, I wish that, because I was out witnessing and I got picked up by the police because uh, of a certain situation, but basically I was out witnessing in the community and she had told me, I wish to God that you would have been drunk in jail anything but this. Because it was embarrassed her it, it, to think that people in the community uh, might be talking. And, and, she, and again, she was a, a person that liked to go out and to drink in the clubs and, and do... But, but so, so it was very contrary to who she was at that point and how she lived, thinking that her son was out on the streets of this little community witnessing and passing out this uh, literature about the Lord. And, and so she was like, oh, I mean, I, I, you know, I kind of look back and laugh at, at her just, uh, uh, you know, because because I, I believe later it, 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 it definitely brought conviction to her. And maybe sometimes when things bring conviction to people, they don't know how to respond. And they're going to go one way or the other. They're going to say, "Oh God, forgive me," or they're going to, or they're going to get hard, and they're going to, uh, 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 you know, try to uh, do something to protect themselves because they, they they feel that that need to to that self preservation of wherever they may be if they they're not ready to surrender to the Lord. Uh, why don't you stand this morning? We're going to get ready to to kind of move forward with our service. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is an ever-present help that can be there in our lives when you yield to him. You can pray morning, noon, or night. You can pray in the Spirit of God in any place and at any time. And as you do, you're yielding to one of the most powerful forces in the universe, if not the most powerful force. As you're praying in the Spirit, you are praying some of the most powerful prayers according to the will of God that you could ever pray. As you yield your mouth to the Spirit of God, you're practicing yielding and submitting and surrendering, which also helps you to surrender and submit to Him like never before. What are you surrendering to? What are you submitting to? What are you relying on? There is a power. There is a Holy Ghost power that God says, desire. Yield to it. Move with it. There's coming a day whenever we're going to realize we need that power like never before. Man can only do so much. Intellect can only do so much. Man and all of his planning and organization, it can only go so far. And we may come to a big halt where we realize we've done all that we can do. Let's just let God take control. I've done everything that I can do. I don't know what else to do. Holy Ghost, help me. Help me, Holy Spirit of God. Fill us, Holy Spirit of God. Help us to yield to you, Spirit of the living God. Because your power we need even if we don't realize we need it, we need it. Our prayer life needs the Spirit of God moving in and through it. Our witnessing needs the Spirit of God. Our worship needs the Spirit of God. Our walk with the Lord needs the help of the Spirit of God. We just acknowledge you in our midst, Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh in this place. Fall fresh upon your people even today rivers of living water move in the midst of your people today in the name of Jesus thank you Heavenly Father thank you thank you Lord thank you Lord 
If we can, why don't we go ahead and uh, I just I, I told John this may be a good song that kind of I, I don't know kind of feels like it kind of goes on with this as we just worship. As we worship, I encourage you make it real. Kind of like Paul said in First Corinthians, I will sing with my mind. I will sing with the Spirit. Maybe even as we're singing, release the Spirit of God. Those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Touch us with your Spirit today, Lord God. Help us to step out and beyond our abilities and step into the Spirit of God and His ever, never-ending power. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father.